Hello, welcome to our Firebird Database Administrator Training, covering the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in this session with looking at a few of the more important firebird.conf parameters. The Firebird conf file can be found in the Firebird root directory. The full set of Firebird configuration parameters are described in detail in the configuration file itself. The server needs to be restarted following any changes made in the configuration file for them to become valid. The first question always asked by newbies in the forums is, I've changed the value and nothing's happened. This is because they've forgotten to remove the hashtag comment at the beginning of the line. To enable an item, you always have to remove the hash. Root directory. If you are using several installations of Firebird servers, use the root directory parameter to specify the location of the active Firebird server. Database access. The database access parameter in firebird.conf can be set to restrict to limit access to explicitly listed file system trees or even to none to allow access to alias databases only. An alias entry needs to exist. The default value is all, that is no restrictions. If a path is entered here, database files may only be stored in this path or its subdirectories. Note that this is not the same thing as the file system level access protection. When database access is anything other than all, the server will refuse to open any databases outside the defined scope, even if it has sufficient rights on the database files. Database access equals none, means that only file locations set in aliases.conf are available. The server can't access any other entries. This is a great security feature because even when someone has a username on the database server, he cannot create a database file because it's not possible to specify an alias remotely. External file access. Firebird has a mechanism enabling tables to be created externally. That is not in the database using the command create table external file. In order to allow such external files, it is necessary to explicitly activate the external file access parameter. Options include none, full or restrict. If you choose restrict, provide a semicolon separated trees list where external files are stored. The default value none disables any use of external files on your site. UDF access. User defined functions are used in Firebird to complement and extend the Firebird server's language. This parameter specifies where UDFs can be found. They are usually to be found in the subdirectory UDF and should, if possible, remain there. UDF access may be none, full or restrict. If you choose restrict, provide a semicolon separated trees list where UDF libraries are stored. Temp directories. Here you can specify where temporary files should be created. When the Firebird server receives a query including order by or similar without an index, then Firebird has to sort the data somewhere. Firebird has a so-called sort buffer, which is principally a memory area where such sorting processes can be performed. If, however, you have a sorting operation that is, for example, 10 gigs, Firebird needs somewhere to do this. From a certain size, when the sort buffer is no longer sufficient, it moves the job out into a temporary file. And you can specify here the location of these temp files. What happens if your database crashes mid sort file? The temp files just sit there. So if your system hangs and you need to reboot, you could suddenly end up with a lot of temp files. While they're being used, they have a handle on them. So if you are allowed to delete or rename them, then it's fine because they're orphans. The default value is determined using Firebird temp, temp or TMP environment options. Every directory item may have an optional size argument to limit its storage. 
This argument follows the directory name and must be separated by at least one space character. If the size argument is omitted or invalid, then all available space in this directory will be used. Examples. Temp directories equals C temp semicolon D temp. Or temp directories equals C temp 100 million, D temp 500 million, E temp. Temp directories are quite important when you're setting up your database particularly where they are in relation to your database, because these two things are bouncing backwards and forwards. As soon as you need a temp file, it's because you don't have enough RAM or you've exceeded your internal limits. So by its very nature, it's going to be reading from the database cache and it's going to be wanting to put information into your temp directory. Default DB cache pages. This influences the cache by setting the number of pages from any one database that can be held in the cache at once. By default, the super server allocates 2048 pages for each database and the classic allocates 75 pages per client connection per database. We'll come back to this later. Remote service name. This is the TCP service name to be used for client database connections. It is only necessary to change either the remote service name or remote service port not both. The order of precedence is the remote service name, if an entry is found in the services file, and then the remote service port. And you don't need to change this if it's your only install. For example, remote service name equals GDSDB. Remote service port. This is the TCP port number to be used for client database connections. It is only necessary to change either the remote service name or remote service port, as we've already said. And, as we've already mentioned, the order of precedence is remote service name and then remote service port. Again, you don't need to change this if it's your only install. E.g. remote service port equals 3052. Remote bind address. This allows incoming connections to be bound to the IP address of a specific network card. It enables the rejection of incoming connections through any other network interface except this one. By default, connections from any available network interface are allowed. CPU Affinity Mask. This parameter only applies to Super Server on Windows. In an SMP, Symmetric Multiprocessing, system, this sets which processors can be used by the server. The value is taken from a bitmap in which each bit represents a CPU. Thus, to use only the first processor, the value is 1. To use both CPU1 and CPU2, the value is 3. To use CPU2 and CPU3, the value is 6. The default value is 1. It does make sense, however, to allow Firebird to use at least two CPUs, so that if the traffic on one of them gets congested due to, for example, a query going wrong, all other traffic can be redirected to the second CPU. So that was our introduction to the Firebird configuration file. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IP Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next tutorial in our series for DB Admins. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.